G'day folks. Well I've got the uh, new springs in for the injection pump. I've already installed one of them but we'll have a uh, close look at how to put this thing back together again. Uh, I have already tested this and it seems to be working. I haven't connected it to the engine but both sides are pumping fuel. Um, there's still a bit more testing to go on but I'll show you how they go together. Now as far as I can remember, as far as I can see, the slot in this piston goes on the uh, fuel inlet side. That's as far as I can tell, so I've got to do a bit more proof testing before I actually connect it up to the injectors and start the engine. But, apart from that little grey area, I mean this could work both ways, it probably doesn't matter which way around it is, but apart from that little grey area I'm going to show you how to put this thing back together again because there's virtually no resources around on the lo online that I've found. Um, that's the part they were $32 each in Australia, which is pricey for a little spring, but hey, they're brand new and gets me out of trouble. The mower works again. I hope I'll eat. can get a decent idea of what's going on with this. So, main thing, there's a little slot down inside the bottom there, and we've got to get this little key lined up with him because this is your um that's connected to your fuel shut off it rotates those pins so drop him down inside just try and finger him into position there we go he's lined up and working the valve seat, or spring seat, sorry. Drop in. Now this is all engine oil side, apart from where that piston goes, so... Everything's pre-cleaned and pretty good, but this side has had water go through it at one point. Um, so there's a bit of rust pitting on the components. So that's good, the seat's in. Now the main spring. Spring drops in. And we can start to place the piston. Make sure it's clean. Drop him in. Drop the retainer on. Now we've got to try and work the uh, shut off and try and line those lugs on the... Uh... There we go. I think that's it. Line the lugs on the piston up with the slots in that little uh, rotating component. It's a little bit tricky. It's a very tight spring and you've got to push it down a certain amount before it will, uh, will work. So he's not moving at the moment. I might have to try again. It's probably rotated too far around, around which it has. A little bit of a tweak. Start over. You can see those two slots there. The piston has two flats on it. And they have to line up with those slots.
got it. You feel it go further forward than before. So the shim. Go back in there. It does have a uh, working side and a non-working side. The one with the uh, laser engraving on it goes towards the roller. Now he has a little key slot on it for the retaining pin that you can see there. And it just goes through the side. There we go. Press that so it's all lined up and working. And try and line him up. And that's it. Just drop that little pin in. Oh, and make sure that he's uh, oriented so that the retaining clip can retain everything. Not in the head. There we go. There we go. That's it. Each one of those works. And that is a clean and assembled pump. Now I've got to put it back in and test it. I'll uh, do the throttle shut off test, make sure that it uh, cuts the fuel off when I turn it off. Uh, that'll indicate, I mean if they, were 100, if they were completely out you'd never be able to shut the fuel off. And probably even over rev the engine, that's the main thing you want to be careful of with this sort of thing. The slots in those pistons probably work both ways because the, I've had one of these apart and it looks like it draws fuel from around it, but Again, I don't have a bore scope small enough to get down inside and really look at the intricacies of the passages. So, testing, testing, and then finally we'll do a uh, actual live start. All right, everything's back in, ready to. Oh, uh, well, I've given it a quick prime, but we'll see what we can do at uh, half throttle. I know it's working. I have done proof testing, but yeah, it's good that noise. It's a goddamn bird again. You can't leave a mirror anywhere without some bird trying to attack it. Yeah, I've got to get rid of that mirror. That bird's going to kill itself. <laughs> right, what was I doing? It's coming down about six feet away. That pump's working. If I turn it off, that kills the pump. And if I do hold that while cranking, fuel just stops. So there's definitely a uh, well, the um, the gov governor and everything's definitely hooked up properly. Oh, we better get those uh, injection lines on and uh, do a start test. Put the rest of this back together again. I've done the uh, filters and things. PTO fluid still good. This one actually has a proper reservoir on it, a recirculation reservoir. Uh, it's all good and clean. Yeah, it's in good health. I know the PTO makes a bit of noise on this, but it's definitely not low on fluid, and the fluid's definitely not bad. So I'm leaving it. It's happy. Now the whole place reeks of diesel. <laughs> You're gonna love working with this stuff though. I love the smell of diesel. Yeah, this is a cute little engine. I know a lot of people say they're used in uh, refrigeration container and uh, truck pa um, power units, auxiliary power units, APUs. They're, actually, I've seen quite a few on eBay recently Looking when I was looking for other parts. I kept finding auctions for these little guys on basically mounted on a skid with a radiator and everything from an APU, like a reefer container. Really neat. They're definitely around if you want one. Alright, lines are bled. Let's see what happens.
was in before. Probably the happiest it's ever been. Perfect. I reckon that's the happiest it's ever been. That spring was probably already half broken when I got the uh, mower and it probably broke the second time into three pieces uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. That is a success. Oh, I guess I better put it back together again. Tidy up my fuel line work and uh, yeah, should be all good. I've bypassed the kinked line that was on the bottom. The return line's not so bad. The return can stay as it is, but the rest of it's been rerun in rubber hose. I've just got to tidy that up now that I know everything's working. I've got some right angle, actual right angle bends, which might help alleviate some of this uh, hose kinking, especially under the seat. It's a bit of a mess down there. So I've got some yeah, little right angle hose barbs. Yeah, very good. And the uh, yeah, temperature gauge works now. Well, that works. I don't know why there's another sender there. There's really nothing on this to really... Oh, I suppose there might be a temperature alert or a cutout or something like that that might uh, force it to shut down if it overheats. That's the only thing I could think that would be for because it's already got the temp gauge, which is that one. There must be an overheat warning or something on there. So there is a bit of electronics in here. That's a charging regulator. There's a relay block and something under here. Yeah. Uh, there's a horn, that's what it is. There's a, oh yeah, there's a flasher relay and a uh, horn. The flasher relay doesn't look like it's hooked up to anything. Probably for a different model which actually has indicators and road going. Probably the bigger one. You can use it on the road. Well, between, uh, between uh, areas that you want to mow anyway. <laughs> Very standard stuff. Looks like a Nissan Micro radiator. Oh, well, that's that job done. I'll put it back together again, and uh, when the lawn dries out, I'll do some mowing. Thanks for watching.